almost definitely going to give you a problem like this. So imagine your own question that result that uh, this data results from, wherever your brain wants to go. Um, so let's say that eight two four seven two six. Okay. So the first thing you want to do with a problem like this, what what is the first thing? Even before you look at the questions, I haven't even written any questions down yet. Tally them up. Tally up. So then you can answer any probability question I give you. So there's 10 total people that said yes, 11 said no, 8 said maybe, there are 14 total men and 15 total women. So how many total people were there? 29. 29. Don't add these to those because then you counted everybody twice, right? Just make sure that adds up the same in both directions. So I can ask you a very simple question like what's the probability if I pick somebody at random? One at random. What's probably a pick? Uh, somebody who said no. Excellent, right? For some reason, some people have trouble reading this chart. They look the wrong way. This row is men. The columns are yes, no, maybe. The columns are the answers, right? So if I say probably no, I want the total number of people said no, 11, out of the total number of people it could be. Could be any of the 29. So that's that. You can make that into a decimal percentage, whatever, right? So what if I say what's the probability I pick a woman who also said maybe? Six out twenty nine. Okay, so I got a couple votes for six out of twenty nine. Because what's and mean? It's got to be both, right? So it's not where you add, because that's being more forgiving. And is very strict. It says you must be this and this and this. And there's fewer and fewer people that can do that. They must be a woman, and they must have said maybe. Well, that's six people. Six people did both out of 29. What's the only time the bottom changes? Given. When it's a given, right? Don't say when you reduce. I know what you mean when you reduce. What's the only time the, problem cha the bottom changes from the beginning is if it's a given. Because if I give you more information, there are fewer things it could be. So that example would be something like, um, it's probably it's a woman given that they said yes. What's going to go on the bottom? What do you know about this person? Ten. Only 10 people pick yes, so you pick out of Yeah, because the thing I know about this person, that the information I was given was that they said yes. So there are 10 people that said yes. Out of those 10 people, how many are women? Two. 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 So it's one out of five. Cool. How's that? Is that all right? And then like an or problem, the only thing you have to be careful about with an or problem, uh, man or no. You be kind of smart about it. You got to include all the men. You got to include all the people that said no. But if I do 11 plus 14, what did I do subtract wrong? Four. Yeah, you got to subtract four. You got to subtract the ones that are both. If I add 11 to 14, I counted those people twice, and that's why in the formula there's a minus four. What would it be out of? 29. 29, because it's not a given. I don't know anything about the person. It could be anybody. Now, to be smart about it, you just say 8 plus 4. Plus, I can say 14 plus the 7 I haven't counted yet, right? So you don't double count the 4 in the beginning. What some people do is they'll do that, and then they'll subtract the 4 on top of that. I'm like, shit, you're so close. One or the other, right? They'll do both. And please, dear God, <coughs> please, dear God, if you get an answer for probably a question like 8 over 5, <laughs> and you can't figure out what went wrong, what should you say? I mean... What's wrong with that answer? It's improper. It's more than one. It, that's I can't do that. It's impossible to have a, a probability more than 100%. <coughs>
right? So don't please your God. I always get that. Somebody writes down 1.87, they keep going. I'm like, no, at least say something. At least say, I'm not sure what I did wrong, but it shouldn't be this. Right? I'll take less points off. I will, if you can show me that you understand that. Yeah? I don't get 3D on the pipes. Oh, um, looking at number three, what's the probability of just three? What's the probability that I get three? 11%. 11 percent. So part B says, what's the probability that I get more than three? One minus 11%. Yeah, one way to do it is one minus 11%. That's everything else, right? Because three is the lowest that could be. What's the probability it's more than three then? One minus the probability three. Or just add up everybody else. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, you know I'm going to ask you at least one problem like 3D. What percentage of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean? You know that's coming. Um, you know I'm going to have one basically exactly like number one. When I say exactly like it, I obviously mean different data, but I'm going to ask you pick one person and now pick a sample and then ask you the same questions again. So you can kind of see how the probabilities change. Uh, to do 3D, I'd have to know what the mean and standard deviation are. I think let's just work off the answer to me first. So three, number three is the one where you'd have to do the sum of x p of x and the sum of x squared p of x by x squared. All that kind of crap. Right? Um, so you end up with the mean being. 5.77 and standard deviation being where to go? Thank you. 1.455. So whenever I ask you this question about what percentage of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, you first set up what within one standard deviation of the mean is. You can't answer the question until you know what that is, right? So here's the mean. How do I get within one standard deviation of it? Go one step up and one step down. So you get uh, 7.2 something. And then you get uh, 4.325. 15. Five. Five. Cool. So what numbers are actually in there then? What does this capture? And, and I want to really make this point. Um, do you know a confidence interval starts at the mean that I find and goes up a certain amount of steps to be so confident, right? And then I'm trying to catch the real thing. This is pr basically exactly the same idea. Now I'm asking you just how many data points did I actually catch? If I create this net, did I catch four? No. no. Did I catch five? <coughs> Hell yeah. There's five. Did I catch six? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did I catch seven? Yeah. Yes. Did I catch eight? No. So five, six, and seven are in there. So what's the probability that I get those three things? Yeah, any of those three things. Add five, six, and seven. But isn't that four in there because it's four point three one five? Well, where would four be though? Wouldn't four be over here? Four is below four point three, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> um, so now you take what's probably a five, probably a six, probably a seven, and you add those up. Mm. Cool, because what do you do when you have, I'll, I'll catch this, or this, or this. I want to add those probabilities up to see the total probability that I do that. Yes? Why don't you just have to know how, how much data you're catching between one to the three standard deviations? Are you thinking about empirical rule? Yeah. That only applies to what kind of distribution? Normal. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that this is normal. In fact, my mm -hmm. guess would be, mm -hmm that it is not normal. Because it goes 11, 14, 12, 13, 50 percent at the end, right? Mm -hmm. It is completely not normal. So you got to be careful about applying that empirical rule in the wrong place. Yeah, and Chubby Dude says, now Chubby Dude's nice because he works for anything, but it's very non-specific. Within one is at least zero percent. So you can put down at least 0%. In fact, you can put that answer down for every probability problem I give you. 
technically you'd be right, at least 0%. Is it specific enough to give you any credit? No. So in this problem, I want something much more specific than I can get from Chebyshev. Why do I want more specific? Because we have all the freaking data. It's not a theory. There's the data. I can see it. I should be able to get something very specific. Do we need to have Chebyshev and uh, empirical memorized against the test? No, nah, just empirical, you should know. Yeah. Chebyshev, I said from the beginning, you don't have to memorize that. I just want to make sure. Yep. Yep. Outside what? Outside of the 4.3 to the 7.3. Well, this doesn't say anything about probabilities. This says data points. I caught the data point of 5. Well, how many 5s are there? 12%. Plus, how many 6s are there? I mean, this is what I definitely caught. I add their percentages up okay. to get the total percentage of what I just caught. So I caught at least 50% of the data because 7 by itself is 50%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's about this, too. Okay. And then when you say... Well, you asked, is it normal or not? And then on the key, it said no, because there should be 68% within. That's exactly. how we would tell. Yes, cool. So empirical rule says within one, there should be 68%. So of course, there's a little bit of leeway with that. Mm -hmm. So if you get close to 68%, I would then check within two. Mm -hmm. If I get close to 95%, I'm like, shit, maybe this is normal. I should also have with me, though, a picture of the histogram because I, I, before I even do all that crap, if the histogram looks like, you know, if the histogram looks like this, then no, I don't care what the percentages look like. So the percentages have to be true, and it has to have a bell curve shape. But that's what you're looking for when you ask. So would this be normal? You're looking for, well, no or yes because it is 68. Might the data be normal? So if it if it did come out if this came out to like 0.67, mm -hmm. I would I would want I would hopefully see well it's close to say so yeah it might be, mm -hmm. you can't say for sure whether it is or not because you don't have the picture made you don't have the other probabilities calculated but so far could it be, yeah if I get 67 percent here I get so yeah 70. so no no way <coughs> not close enough yeah. um, so five C right. Here, this one. I just didn't get how you got oh, point seven nine eight. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'll I, I promise you this. On the actual final exam, I will have written on the final the cutoff. <laughs> so those of you who took the test in the uh, outside of here, you didn't have that. I put the number up on the board. So on the final, I have the number on the test. But again, that comes from the chart that's in the back of the book. You guys aren't responsible for the chart. I just want to show you that it, that it does exist. Okay. So I'll have that number on the, on the test. Um, cool. Number four is the um, nine percent believe it is a priority. So how many believe it's not a priority? Ninety-one percent, good. It's not in the camera. What's that? The camera's too loud. Oh, thank you. That's probably too loud. <laughs> Um, and I ask you, if 35, 35 Californians were selected, so what kind of problem must this be then, from what I've told you so far? NPQ problem, right? Binomial distribution. So I, I then kind of know what formulas to look for to help me do this. So part A is just a straightforward um, probability question. So I want to use... 
this guy. So what I want to kind of do for myself is summarize what I know. So I'm able to just plug and chug into the formula. What is n in this case? 35. And what's little p? Beautiful. That's my probably success. I'm looking for people who, um, actually in this case, be careful. No, I'm right. That's right. I think I had it backwards up here. <coughs> actually, thankfully, only 9% think it's not a priority. So p is 0 0.09. What's q? 0 0.91. <laughs> 0.91. Must be the rest. And I want to know the probability of 4. So x, the number of successes, must be 4. So now I have everything I need to plug it in. You just have to make sure you remember, where do I go to get that choose from, right? So this would be, I have 35 people. I want to choose four of them to do something. So how many of them do this? Four. And how many of them do the other thing? 31. 31. I love it. That only makes sense. If four of them do this, there's 35 people total. 31 must do the other thing. All right, so now just make sure you remember how to get that choose. So where do we go on the calculator to get the choose? So it's um, 35 math. Go over to PRB, probability. And then it's number, shoot, three? I always forget. Three. Yes, you know. Three. Can you write it down to Four. So 35, choose four. Right, go to math, probability, choose. <laughs> and then I keep going times 0.09 to the 4th times 0.91 to the 31st. That way you won't get any weird errors. This will be really big. That will be really small. Together they make a nice normal number. Right. It's a really big place to watch out for getting an answer like 2.8 which is bigger than one, which is impossible. So be careful. Yeah? Could you tell us how to type it in, like how you wrote it on the calculator? Yeah, let me do this. I'm, I'm going to show you this one, and I'll show you a few other little tricks in the calculator if you want to be able to check your answer to, I don't know, a normal distribution problem. That is funny. Somebody got upset. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. Semester's already basically over. Aren't you going to miss us? Huh? Aren't you going to miss us? Yeah, actually, I will. Every time I give a final, it hits me that I've seen you guys so much every week, and then all of a sudden, you miss me? <laughs> you guys are like, thank God we're not going to see Mr. Waller. <laughs> <laughs> That's terribly exciting. So I want to show you, uh, I want to remind you about binomial PDF and CDF. So we'll double check this answer using that. Uh, and then I want to show you a couple things I haven't shown you yet that are on the calculator Bible I just never talked about in class. This is what I want to do.
Um, so let's first do it the way it is here. Then we'll do it with the binomial, which one would I use, P or C? C. P. P means particular value. I only want four. P, uh, C would be cumulative, would be like from zero up to four. So I would want to use binomial, binomial PDF. Do you have to be able to do binomial P or CDF to pass this course? No, not at all. But it's good to be able to check your work. So to do it the way it is up here, I would put in there uh, 35, math, probability, number three for choose, 35, choose four people. <coughs> so I want 9% to the fourth for those four people, and then the rest to the rest. <coughs> okay, so I get 1846. Again, sir? Yeah, it's not a bad idea to put probabilities in four decimals because we're now we should be used to it coming off the z-score chart with four four decimal places. Yeah. Um, now let's double check it with binomial PDF. If you hit second distribution, notice the first couple that I pointed out a while back, but we actually never really used. And then I want binomial PDF. And it might be in a different place on your list. I don't know. For me, it's A. Who remembers what the inputs were for this? It's got to be something with these. Which one of these do I not really need to tell the calculator? Q. Yeah, I don't need to tell a Q because it can figure it out on its own. So it's just NPX. In that order? Yep. So 35, comma. 0.09 comma 4. And thank God it's exactly the same answer as this formula, right? Because that's basically what the calculator does, is this formula. Where'd you go to get the binomial PDF? Oh, second VARS to get up to distributions. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you something kind of cool. Um, can you guys, who's got a z-score chart with them handy there? <coughs> can somebody figure out what z-score has 0.1587 area below it? negative one, right? Do you guys see that? If you look up 0.1587, it's got a negative 1.00. Look at number three, inverse norm. Inverse meaning opposite. Isn't Everything we just did to get that answer is the opposite of what we normally do, right? I normally look up a z-score, get the area. So if I go to number three and put in there 0.1587, it gives me negative one basically, right? It gets it even more precise than the chart can, obviously, because the chart's all rounded. That's what inverse norm does. That's kind of crazy. So watch this. Uh, for 99% confidence interval, who remembers what the z-scores were? Yeah, 2.576, right? Well, what percentage is down here in this tail? Oh, oh, 5, I love it. Because there's 1% outside, so half of it. So if I do inverse norm, 0 0.005, there's my 2576. Okay, cool. Maybe, maybe. And then here's the really nice thing. So, um, what's nice, Jeff? If I do, let me do one that we already know. Let's see if you guys do know this. Between 1.96, negative 1.96 and 1.96, does anybody know what percentage of the data would be in there? I love it because that's actually the exact, the more precise thing from the empirical rule, right? Within two is 
Look at number um, <coughs> second vars. Number two, normal CDF. I want a cumulative uh, probability in between. So if I go to number two and I put in from negative 1.96, <coughs> comma, 1.96, there's my 95%. So that's a decent thing to know to be able to check yourself on the test, right? It'll be more precise there, so you gotta be careful. It might not be exactly the same as what you get using the chart, but it's a nice way to kind of double check yourself. Okay, maybe, maybe, and that's all I got. 9.30 on Tuesday. Tuesday, same time, 9.30.